One of my favorite things about this kind of um, interview is that I get to interview my good political friends, which is always fun to have conversations that we always have off the air, on the air. And we're going to do that today. With me now is my good political friend, Bethany Mandel. She also has a resume besides my friend. She's the editor of the uh, Heroes of Liberty children's book series. She's a contributor or contributor at the Deseret News. Bethany, good to see you. You too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. So aside from your very impressive resume and CV, um, just the fact that you have these glorious bookshelves full of children's books behind uh, behind you qualifies you for this interview. You are the editor of a new children's book series. Um, first of all, just give us give us the, the basic info on what this is because you've sent them to me. They're phenomenal. Yeah, I'm so glad you like them. So they are basically, I mean, the children's book industry is garbage for so many reasons besides political reasons, um, although that's definitely part of them. And this is sort of like, this is the solution. This is the cure. It's a literary startup that's like a David and Goliath versus Scholastic. And we are trying to expose kids to, you know, heroes. It's heroesofliberty.com. Um, <laughs> but they're, I mean, we're trying to expose them to heroes that they might not be familiar with otherwise. So um, Thomas Sowell is our bestseller. It's by far everyone's favorite. Um, Ronald Reagan, old classic. Most controversial, Amy Coney Barrett, which I like the best. Well, her, her hero status will be determined based on how she rules on Dobbs, right? So, so that's a little indeterminate. <laughs> that's what people say. But for the purposes of a children's book, I have two daughters. You have a daughter as well. And you will come to learn that every single girl's book that is marketed towards girls that's been written in the last like 10 or 15 years is like, woman scientist, woman NASA astronaut, like all of these incredible careers, never a peep about motherhood, never a peep about about large families. Large families are always a laugh line. They're always a joke. And this is like, oh, this is a super successful woman who also prioritized her family and who also prioritized marriage and had a large family. And it's a wonderful message that girls do not get now. It truly is. My my comment was tongue in cheek. I, I mean, of course, politically, <laughs> I will I will judge her based on how she rules there. But regardless of that, she has seven children. She's yeah. a Supreme Court justice. That's very impressive. Um, a very involved mother here. And it is interesting. So like like I said, I told you this off the air, but I tried to read my 10-month-old these books. <laughs> she's not she's not quite ready for them yet. But That's already, I mean, we're talking, I read her board books with nursery rhymes, right? Yeah. Like the song books. Yeah. Um, already there's strains of wokeness in children's books all the way down to like toddlers, yes. toddlers. And I, I actually was surprised at this. I'm glad, by the way, that my parents and that my husband's parents saved a lot of their children's books because that's back when, you know, Sesame Street was just Sesame Street, when yeah. it wasn't when it wasn't woke Sesame Street advertising yep. vaccines for kids by Big Bird. Yep, I've written about that for Deseret. Yes, just good, educational, fun, cute yep. books for kids. So all of these mostly are used. Abebooks.com is going to be your best friend. But I mean, yeah, that's it. That's the only way that you can find good books. And, you know, especially with like Amy Coney Barrett, like this is a modern day person that you can't, there's no, there nothing, nothing exists about her. Do you know how many books are about Ruth Bader Ginsburg? My count was 27. 27 children's books about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Woke, baby, now they're all, so I've heard from a lot of children's book writers and editors and publishers and agents, and all of them say, they only want books about gender stuff now. So books about transgender parents, yeah. how about how they, the kids feel transgender. They're, I think one of the books was like born a girl or something like that. All of them have this bend. And this is not, I mean, what, the problem with all of this kind of thing is when you prioritize a political message, you sacrifice the creative, you sacrifice the quality. And you can see it, it's garbage. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a book, I think it's called Anti-Racist ABCs or Woke ABCs. Mm -hmm. I actually saw this book in, um, I, I think it was in Florida on my honeymoon five years ago, four years ago. And even, even that amount of time ago, this was like an aberration. This was like, yeah. oh, that's a funny, not funny, like funny, not funny type of book. Yeah. This wasn't fully 
uh, the, the children's book industry wasn't fully poisoned by this ideology. It was in like a souvenir shop. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's not really funny, but kind of funny. Now this is what people are teaching their kids. And you, honestly, the woke leftists know how to do it. They, yeah. they have a strategy that's effective because these children's minds are like sponges. I mean, yeah. you and I read these books and we're like, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good historical fact. Your kids read that book. And the next time you say one word differently, they're like, oh, you're reading it wrong. You're reading yeah. it wrong because we remember the exact sentence accurately. Yep, yep. And that's, that's exactly it. And the problem is, they're not teaching their kids this as much is a lot of the people who control the children's book industry do not have children themselves, the writers, the publishers, the agents, everything. But the problem is, and this is going to be a weird sort of villain, the librarians are the villains in this story because they have bulk purchasing power and they're they're buying this garbage. And so all of these books that you see are from library sales because they offload all the good books. And then when they're rebuying things to replenish their shelves, they're buying woke baby. They're buying my Maddie about my transgender parent. It's terrible. It's yeah. super terrible. So um, this is your books, Heroes of Liberty, and I believe yeah. it's heroesofliberty.com is where yes. people can go to find these. Um, we have a special offer for viewers of our show because our we viewers are like-minded. They're looking for ways to actually educate their children, to teach them to love to read, to teach them history, to teach them the reality, to elevate truth. Um, we have a special code right before Christmas. These are perfect stocking stuffers, of course. This is the classic sales pitch because I want yeah. you to sell a lot of these books. I yes. want the children of our country to be educated. Yeah. I want them to avoid being anti-racist, woke babies. Yep. Tell us what this special offer is. So go to our website, heroesofliberty.com, and use the code Liz, and I think it's 5% off. And just also keep in mind, that you're not just buying wonderful books, but this is truly a David and Goliath fight. Scholastic has schools behind them. They have the PTA behind them. They do book sales. They have all the librarians. Like this is, I mean, along with a couple of other children's books that are sort of on our side, like Tuttle Twins, like there's not that much out there that's fighting back against this narrative. And as far as biographies, which is the best way for kids to sort of connect with history and all of these sort of ideas, this is it. So here's liberty.com, code Liz. You can almost liken it to the hold that teachers unions have on public school compared 100%. to the parents who are taking over school boards. This yeah. is the fight that we're also fighting in the children's book industry. And like I said, the leftists are smart. They know how to indoctrinate the youth. Bethany, can you show us a couple of pictures? Yeah, I'd absolutely love to. So, we, it's sort of a funny story. So, I mean, not funny, you know, funny, not funny, like we're talking about. Yeah. So we had, um, we had approached all the best illustrators in the country to illustrate these books. Those are beautiful pictures. And they all were like, yeah, sure, no problem. They're beautiful. And it's how you get kids engaged. And so we approached all these illustrators and they heard who they would be illustrating and they were like, oh no, because they were afraid of getting canceled. So we went to illustrators all around the world and truth be told, and I like I keep on making this joke and I hope that my boss doesn't yell at me, they have no business illustrating children's books. They're too good. But I'm not gonna tell these people that. Like keep on illustrating all of our books. But they're fantastic. They're so well done. And um and I, I it just keeps on getting better. One of the things I think that all parents know about uh, children's books is it has to be both a good story, but it really does have to be engaging photos. Yeah. I'm talking about colorful. I'm talking about detailed. I'm talking about capturing action and faces, yeah. not just inanimate objects. And that was one of the things, I mean, I was actually really excited to read this. I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> lady baby, you're not quite old enough because I'm really excited <laughs> to read these books to you. I can't wait to get out of the nursery rhyme, yeah. uh, the nursery rhyme face. And these books are beautiful. Yeah, I, that's how I feel. And they keep on getting better. So these three books are available for Christmas and then we're going to churn out one a month. So we've got John Wayne, Mark Twain, Margaret Thatcher, um, Alexander Hamilton is coming out. And the illustrator, that one, like, unbelievable. The craziest illustrations I've ever seen in a children's book. So it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I can't wait for that. You'll, you'll have to come back and show us that one. Um, I'd love to. When when it's out. And I'm not just saying this with an ulterior motive because I want the book <laughs> sent to me because I want a, I want a copy of it. I actually want I everyone do. to read these books. Heroesofliberty.com. If you use promo code Liz, you get a 5% discount. These are perfect stocking stuffers. Support the industry. Support the alternative, not the industry. Support mm -hmm. the alternative to the industry because yeah. it's the same fight as the teachers unions. They have, the woke people have this hold on children's books and we shouldn't let them. Yeah. Um, we shouldn't let them at all because the future of our country is at stake. Bethany, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being the David in this David and Goliath fight. And thanks for talking to me today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Liz.
already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.